Some days ago, I had to render a rather simple 3D scene, which involved some monitor screens stacked on top of each other over a reflective floor. Nothing special really, except that the reflection was blurry, and I don't have access to a modern graphics card capable of real-time rendering. I have to say, blurry reflections are a nightmare you have to deal with at some point. In fact, my relatively new computer struggled with the render for about 8 to 9 hours. So, I thought there has to be a simpler or smarter solution. And after some experimentation and not so long search over the internet, I found one. Although, some might call it cheating. Hear me out though and decide for yourself. My technique involves mirroring the camera point of view, rendering a second pass from that angle, just for the reflection, and composite those two passes together. I'll build a simple scene to demonstrate that concept to you. Start by adding a figure object to the scene and placing a main camera. Animate it around as you see fit. To mirror the camera point of view, add a second camera and attach an Espresso tag to it. Drag and drop the main camera to the Espresso editor and from the output list select Global Matrix. To reflect the camera point of view, we'll use a math node. Change its data type to matrix and the function to multiply. Connect our camera matrix output to the maths node's second input. Now the order is very important here. A matrix is a way to store and manipulate objects' transformations all in one data type. A matrix multiplication is the equivalent of transforming an object as the child of another one, so in its local space. In our case we are transforming the camera from the world center coordinates because the first input of the math node is untouched. So by default it stores a zero position, zero rotation and zero scale transformation. Although it doesn't show that matrix is represented with a 1 in each coordinate for the v1, v2 and v3 inputs which all together represent the orientation and scale of an object. Now you don't necessarily have to know how a matrix is built in order to use it. In our case, we want to invert the orientation of the x and y coordinates. Set the x and y values of v1 and v2 channels to negative 1 respectively. Now drag the new camera into the Espresso editor and feed the resulting matrix into its global matrix input. The moment you let go the mouse, the reflection camera jumps to the opposite side of the world's XZ plane like it's a mirrored version of the original one. This expression is the equivalent of parenting the reflection camera to a null placed in the center of the world and setting the parent rotation to negative 180 degrees in both heading and pitch. You can try it for yourself if you like. But because the Espresso tag is calculated on every refresh of the scene, it mirrors the camera transformations during animation also. Set the reflective camera as the active one and hit render to verify. The image is the reflected version of the original one. You can now composite them together in your compositor of choice. There's another step still though. To have a believable blurry effect, we'll render a world position pass. Open the Render Settings window, enable Multipass checkbox, and from the Multipass menu select Post Effects. This has to be on. Now, from the Effects drop-down menu select Position Pass. Each pixel in this pass stores in its RGB channels the XYZ position values of everything in the scene that's within the camera projection. Let me say that again. Maybe it makes more sense. Every object in the scene that is included in the camera projection stores in this pass the XYZ values relative to the world coordinates into the RGB channels for every pixel. Later on we use the green channel of this pass which stores the Y position in world space for every pixel to mask the blur effect and simulate a more realistic blur reflection. Camera and per object coordinate spaces can also be selected. 
The camera space is valuable to create a depth of field pass if you wish. The scale parameter sets the distance for a normalized 0 to 1 value. By default, it's one unit. That means everything within the 0 to 1 range in the world will get a 0 to 1 value in RGB. All else will just be represented as either white or black in each of the RGB channels. That should not be a problem because the position pass will be stored in a 32-bit floating point format, so no value gets lost. If you want to normalize the value for our object, so it will all be within the visible 0 to 1 range, you can adjust the scale parameter of the position pass in the basic properties window. Now our object has a bounding box of roughly 183, 180 and 36 centimeters. Let me open the calculator and do the math. Now copy this result in the scale parameter. Hit render. You can see a normalized image that holds the values for x, y and z. The scaling pass is not necessary as we can scale the values for R, G and B in the compositor, but I think it's good to know it's there. One thing left. Apart from the figure object, our scene appears to be empty. Every pixel in our camera view that isn't hitting an object in the scene is assigned a value of zero in the RGB channels. That may seem fine, but it results in some strange artifacts when we apply the blurring compositing. So, one solution is to fill the empty pixels of the scene with a square plane, so it is assigned a value other than zero. This plane should be present only in the reflection pass, not the regular one. Trust me, I've tested it. You can prepare the render passes manually, or use the Cinema 4D Take system to automate it with render layers. Anyway, for the reflection pass, remember to save the multipass image in OpenEXR format, either as a 16 or 32-bit depth. In compositing, import your render layers and add an extractor filter to extract the green channel that represents the Y position in world coordinates. You can now see the gradient spanning from the ground level until the top of the figurehead. It is possible to adjust the range of this gradient using the black and white point values. We will use this layer as a mask for the blurring effect. Let's make this layer invisible and apply a camera lens filter into the reflective layer. Set the blur map to our hidden layer and set the source to effect and mask. This makes the blur value change more gradually as it goes more deeply under the ground, so to say. You can play with the parameters at your wish and enjoy an almost real-time blurry reflection effect right at your compositing application. As I said, this is totally obsolete for anyone that, unlike me, has access to a real-time render engine and a decent graphics card. For everyone else, I hope you find it useful. Please send me a comment for any question you may have with this technique, and don't forget to share the knowledge. Bye.